Tell us a little bit about your book, High Gorgeous, Starry Eyes and Toxic Lies. High Gorgeous is uh, my true story involving the odyssey that I took into the world of online dating fraud and the emotionally abusive marriage that resulted from that. Those two words, High Gorgeous, those are the words with which my former husband penned his first email to me. Your memoir is a true life cautionary tale about online dating fraud. What initially compelled you to try online dating? In my mid-30s, I uh, had many things going for me, uh, but I was very dissatisfied with the level of communication and one-on-one -on -one interaction that the normal dating scene provided. And I perceived online dating to offer me an option to hand-pick potential mates from a variety of different profiles where everybody had their picture up, cards laid out on the table. But what I didn't understand is that the security of the computer screen permitted my former husband, as well as many other con artists, the opportunity to pretend that there's something that they're not. What type of lies were you told? I was told that uh, he was a former Navy SEAL. I was told that, you know, he had, he claimed, he laid claim to three Purple Hearts, uh, spoke several times about the various and sundry combat missions that never existed for him. Uh, I was told that uh, he was only married once before, not twice. Jack Cass, the man you met online and later married, became abusive towards you in several ways. Of the different types of abuse, emotional, physical, verbal, sexual, financial, which affected you the most? Without question, it was emotional abuse for a couple different reasons, not the least of which is the fact that emotional abuse, unlike physical, tends to leave scars that remain. Uh, when people are punched and kicked with words and nefarious control tactics, those are scars that do not leave very easily. Another reason why the emotional abuse affected me most is the fact that I had trouble, like many do today, taking emotional abuse seriously. Many people like to see evidence of harm, scars, bruises, cuts, and scrapes. And you don't see that with emotional abuse. So it was even hard for me to take it seriously. Some readers may be surprised to learn that you willingly posed in a bikini for Jack's Biker Babe website. Why did you do that, and do you regret in any way? I chose to uh, pose for his website primarily because he had built me up with a lot of flattery and compliments to my physical appearance and to my body. When we first got married, he asked if if I had ever considered modeling, and that's what initiated uh, his website. And I willingly posed for it because I saw it as an opportunity to balance my intellectual legal side with a fun, sexy, playful aspect of my personality. And do I regret it? No, I, I, I don't regret doing that. I regret the dysfunction that it spiraled into because what happened was it became uh, an avenue for which my ex enacted more verbal abuse and denigration on me in terms of my body, uh, appearance, it became a method of control and it was no longer fun. For a long time after Jack began abusing you, you stayed with him. Some readers might wonder why a seemingly intelligent woman, an attorney no less, would remain in that situation. Why did you stay? I stayed because, like many women in abusive situations, I was hoping that he would eventually seek some assistance professionally for his temperamental outburst and for the pain that he was causing myself and for the pain that he seemed to be experiencing. But that never really came. And I stayed not only because I was hoping he would change, but also I was too ashamed to admit the severity of my situation, uh, and I didn't want to start disclosing to people that my husband was uh, mistreating me. Mm -hmm. What was the final straw, the point where you realized you had to leave him? For me, the one of the final major red flags, not the only one, but it was the last major red flag, occurred one morning when I witnessed him uh, kill a family cat, a beloved pet, in a fit of rage. 
in front of his nine-year-old step, his nine-year-old daughter, my stepdaughter at the time, and I witnessed him pick it up, snap his neck, and throw him outside like he was a piece of garbage. And that signaled to me that he was out of control. And I realized at that point that something serious was wrong, and I had to leave. Something had to give. In ret retrospect, is there anything you could have done to prevent your being ensnared in that nightmare situation? In looking back, I look back at the initial time period when we began our interaction online. The only thing that I can think of that could have possibly given me more time to explore uh, the truth of his situation was perhaps allowing more time for phone contact, for internet contact before we began one-on-one -on -one dating. But bear in mind, there are many things, for the most part, the items that he kept secret were things that I couldn't have known without a great deal of time, resources, and um, time at my expense. And especially the fact that, for example, when we married, he was still seeing his former girlfriend in a township over an hour away. There was very little I could have done to find things like that out. So many of the aspects that arose, no, I don't believe I could have done much to prevent that. Mm -hmm. What is the greatest lesson you hope people will derive from reading your s story? The greatest lesson I hope that people will understand is that this is the kind of thing that can happen to almost anybody. People with heart, people who are human can be fooled. Uh, if, if you're human and you want love and you want understanding, you can be fooled, you can be drawn into somebody who has an agenda. And my memoir isn't meant to be an indictment of online dating in general because people can meet abusive individuals in any setting, whether it's on a computer, whether it's at a bar, whether it's at a library. But the point is that abuse can happen to anybody. And it's important for people to understand to keep your guard up at the appropriate time and stay true to yourself, to your self-esteem, and follow your instincts. Do you have a copy of your book with you? As a matter of fact, I do. Uh, Hi Gorgeous is available at uh, Amazon.com. It's available on BarnesandNoble.com. If you don't see it in a store near you, Ask. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.